So that guitar that I just played for you right here is the Grand Pacific Dreadnought. And what's interesting, and I'll use a, just a medium pick here, because we're gonna do some bluegrass. Give it up for the little Italian kid. All right. I love you guys. <laughs> so what we have is we have a dreadnought that gives you that wonderful, warm, mature sound. What, what, what the heck is warm and mature? I'm so glad you asked. You have great questions. Let me compare. This is a sapel, a solid sapele back and side, spruce top, 317 E. Okay, everybody got that? USA made. Uh, this guitar has a normal street price. Normally I don't talk pricing, but just so, we, no, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter what it costs. It's under $2,000. Okay. But here, I'll wait if you want to get that phone call. Okay. Just teasing. This guitar is the 314. Sapele back and side, spruce top. The, the, the exact same series in wood, but this is a grand auditorium. So I'm going to try to play the exact same lick so you can hear the difference. Do you remember what the 11 sound like? Okay. Now, did you hear a difference? Did you hear a difference? Yeah. Okay. The other thing. Okay. I'm sorry. And you have terrible hearing. Thank you for being honest. Okay. Well, I'll try to talk slower and clearer for you if that's going to help you. And it won't. Okay. What you should have heard was a little bit brighter in that end and a little more push in the mid range. And the reason is, is that this guitar is more of a high, higher fidelity, the Grand Auditorium, because when this guitar came out, you know, music has been changing. The excuse me, let me take that back. Well, it has, but let me take it back. The role of the guitar in music has been changing. More behind the back chords, you know. And we can hear things like that now because we have microphones. We're not, in the shirt, we're not in the Wayback Machine going back in time. You can hear all those cool. So that's the. You should be able to hear a huge difference there. That was much more mid-range heavy and, and didn't have the brightness. So two totally, entirely different uses of a guitar, which is why you need both. You guys are welcome. Guys in the back of the room. Okay, so let's continue on with Grand Pacific. The next Grand Pacific we have is a mahogany. Sapele and mahogany are kind of like cousins. Uh, Sapele is like a faster growing. The mahogany is a little bit more, more of a mature type of wood. And this one has a, uh, the 517 and the 717 guitars that I'm gonna show you. We're classifying these as builder's editions guitars. And what that means is that Andy has added a couple of tweaks to these guitars that make them just a little bit more special, a little bit more desired, uh, desirable, I should say. Um, so let me go through a couple of them with you. The edges here are rounded. They're ever so slightly camfered on the sides. Makes it for a little bit more comfortable playing, resting on your leg, things like that. Also, the fret and the edges here are also rounded in. He even took the bridge to kind of like so, to, go, to go with the soft shoulders and he rounded the bridge. On the back of the guitar, on the neck, up here, uh, there's a very soft V carve. And it goes from, a, from that to like a C or a D shape. 
So we're, we're actually calling this a compound carved neck. The reason that that's kind of cool is that your hand is in a different position when you're here than when you're here. All right? you're, you're playing, you're, you know, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course, but you do this as you come up. And as you... And I'm not trying to play notes or anything, but I'm just... You can see that my hand is in a different position. Okay, so that's what that's all about. And the other thing we kind of did that was fun was we rounded this. Um, a lot of our other guitars come up to a point here, and the strap button normally goes here. Well, we moved the strap button here just to, so you got just a little bit better access up here because now that we have that V-Class Sonic engine going on, we actually have the ability to play great sounding notes that aren't plinking. So you can do all of those all stuff like that. Question in the back. Correct. On the 517 and the 717 only. Yep. Great question. So what does a mahogany sound like? Well. Let's have some fun here. Thank you. You know, the, the normally, normally you would always use a mahogany guitar if you're a strummer. You know, if you're the guy. It's very focused, it's very flat, it doesn't have high end, it doesn't have low end. But with V-Class Engine, it, it really, this guitar suddenly has a little bit different voice. And so now we're, we're back to that sound. Remember, this is a sound that we've never had before. Let's listen to the Rosewood. Now, the Rosewood guitar, the 717, everything I told you about the 517 is still correct on the 717. The difference is this one is Rosewood. Rosewood on a scale, uh, if, if we're uh, talking about a graphic equalizer, Rosewood does this. It has a little bit of an extended low end, a little bit of an extended high end, a little dip in the mid range, and where if you're a singer or a songwriter, this is probably where you're going to want to go to because it gives your voice a place to live because we're, we're human beings and we communicate in the mid-range. Elliot, if I knew you really well and caller ID didn't exist and I called you on the phone, I'd go, hey man, what's up? And you go, hey Rich, because your ear is tuned to mid-range. Even through a tiny cell phone speaker, you, you can pick it out. I can, you know, I can pick out the tone of my wife's voice depending on what mood she's in because I've been married over five years. Okay, so, where, so Rosewood, You should be able to hear the richness of that. I 
I mean, it's even good for, it's, it, you know, normally a guitar like this, you just want to pound it because it's a dreadnought, you know, you, or, or you want to. And then tears again, you know, they come back. But, um, but you can even finger style this guitar. Um, let's see. But the idea being is that those, those low end notes were coming through. And everything that comes through really clear. You can hit the guitar hard, you can hit it soft, you can use a pick, you can use your fingers. And on a dreadnought, that's not normally the case. <laughs>